4.5, Derivatives and the Shape of a Graph. So we turn our attention at this point to using information we know about the derivative to determine what a graph looks like, what, what we're going to see. So from corollary 3 to the mean value theorem, which happens to be a theorem in its own right because it is a very important concept, we saw that if a function is increasing, then the derivative, f prime of x, is greater than 0 on that interval. And if a function is decreasing on a certain interval, then the function, f prime of x, is less than 0. So we can use this to sketch the graphs of functions. Now, one thing we have to remember is that if the derivative is 0, that does not mean we have local extrema. Not necessarily. So here is a generic graph here. We can see that at the different critical points, we have a critical point at A. Well, that in that case, it's undefined. Well, now that is a maximum point. And in this case, it is increasing and then decreasing. So that tells us there's a change in the direction of the graph, which means there was a maximum or minimum. Okay? If we have this point right here, you have a critical point at B. Well, that is a minimum, in fact, but it changes from decreasing to increasing. So notice there's a th something going on with the derivative there. At the point C, the derivative of C is 0. It's a critical point, but it is not a maximum or a minimum because the function continues to increase on both sides of that. And then the last, a critical point at D, the derivative is 0, and the graph changes from increasing to decreasing, so that makes a maximum point. So this brings us to the first derivative test. Suppose that f is a continuous function over an interval i containing a critical point c. So therefore the function is 0 or the function is undefined there, or the derivative is undefined there, or the derivative is 0. If f is differentiable over the interval, except possibly at that point, then f of c satisfies one of the following descriptions. If f prime changes from positive to negative, then it's a local maximum. Okay, so it goes from positive to negative. Then we have a maximum at that point. If f prime changes sign from negative to positive, then we have a minimum, a local minimum at that point. And if it has the same sign on both sides, so say increasing then increasing, or decreasing then decreasing, then it's neither a local maximum or a local minimum. So let's go ahead and look at an example to use this with. Use the first derivative to find the location of all local extrema for f of x equals x cubed minus 3x squared minus 9x minus 1. Well, let's begin by taking the first derivative. First derivative there is 3x squared minus 6x minus 9. And we'll want to set this equal to 0, so factoring will work here. Take out a 3 x squared minus 2x minus 3, and that is going to factor as x plus 3, x minus 1. No, let's change that. x minus 3, minus 3, plus 1. Alright, so we have critical points. at x equals 3 and negative 1. 3 and negative 1. All right, so let's make a sine diagram. Right, so the derivative is 0 at those points. So uh, negative 1 and 3, the derivative is 0. And I'm going to go ahead and draw this with a flat line. That's a horizontal tangent there. All right, so if we look at that. Now let's test the intervals. So if I plug in 0 into my derivative, I get a negative value. So it is decreasing in that interval. If I plug in a value of 4, that is going to make for a positive function, so it's increasing there. If I plug in negative 2, it will be positive. So I can tell you my function is increasing from negative infinity to negative 1, not including negative 1 and it's increasing from 3 to positive infinity, decreasing between negative 1 and 3. All right. All right, so that tells us we have a local max at x equals negative 1. 
and a local minimum at x equals 3. Alright, that's what we were after. That was the location of our extrema. Next, use the first derivative to find the location of all local extrema for f of x equals 5, x to the 1 third, minus x to the 5 thirds. Alright, taking the derivative of that we get 5 thirds x to the negative 2 thirds, minus 5 thirds x to the negative, or no, the positive 2 thirds. Okay, so if we set that equal to 0, actually first, well we are going to set it equal to 0, but let's rewrite this. This is 5 over 3. I'm going to go ahead and factor that out. That would be 1 over x to the 2 thirds minus x to the 2 thirds, which is equivalent to 1 minus x to the 4 thirds or x to the 2 thirds. Okay. Setting that equal to 0, we find that we have critical points at x equals plus or minus 1. And we also have a critical point at x equals 0 because the derivative is undefined at that point. So let's test these points. We have 0, 1, negative 1. So the derivative is 0 at plus or minus 1, and it is undefined, the vertical tangent at that point. Okay, so if we evaluate points in those regions, so say positive 2. At positive 2, our function is decreasing. At, say, 1 half, our function is increasing. At negative 1 half, negative 1 half, our function is increasing. And, say, at negative 2, our function is decreasing. So we've got something happening kind of like this. All right, so this appears, this function appears to have a local minimum at x equals negative 1 a local maximum at x equals 1, and that point 0 is neither a maximum or a minimum because the sign of the derivative does not change. All right, next thing we have on the docket is concavity. Let f be a function that's differentiable on over an open interval i. If f prime is increasing over i, we say it's concave up. If f prime is decreasing over i, we say it's concave down. So if you, look, if you look at these examples here, if the derivative is increasing, what, what produces here, what we have is something like a, a turning up, okay, it's facing up. If f prime is increasing, like as on this one here, we again have this sort of bowl shape, it's facing up. If f prime is decreasing, so here we have a less steep line, we have a less steep line as we go. We get something of a bowl facing down, and same idea here coming from the opposite direction. So the sign or the derivative of our derivative actually tells us a little bit more of the nuances of the shape of our graph. It tells us if it is concave up or concave down. Now, we have a test for concavity, and that is if f is a function that's twice differentiable, then f prime of x being greater than 0 means that it is concave up. If f pr double prime is less than 0, then it is concave down. You can think of this as the first derivative test. Okay, it's, it's analogous to the first derivative test. We're just taking the derivative of the derivative. And we also have the idea of an inflection point. This is a point where the concavity changes, where it goes from concave down to concave up or concave up to concave down. That point there would be an inflection point. That would be an inflection point. So those points where the concavity changes. All right. 
Example 3. For this function, determine all intervals where f is concave up and all intervals where f is concave down and list all the inflection points. Well, to do that, we are going to have to find the second derivative. So let's go ahead and find the first derivative. That would help. 3x squared minus 12x plus 9. Okay, so then our second derivative of x is going to be 6x minus 12. Now if we do a sine diagram, we create a sine diagram for that, well, where this is equal to 0 is going to produce x equals 2. So our concavity is 0 at 2. Now, let's evaluate at a point greater than 2. A point greater than 2, it is positive, meaning it is concave up. At a point less than 2, it is negative or concave down. Now, because it changes in there, that means we have an inflection point. Inflection point at x equals 2 and it is concave up over a certain interval and concave down. So where the second derivative is negative, that is concave down, so this is concave down from negative infinity to 2, and it's concave up from 2 to positive infinity in this case. All right, now because the first derivative can tell us something about our local minimums and local maximums, the second derivative also can. So this theorem is called the second derivative test, and it starts, suppose f prime of c equals 0. That is, c is a critical point. Right? c is a critical point. That is a big note to make throughout this. If f double prime is continuous, if the second derivative is greater than zero at that point, at the critical point, if it is greater than zero, then it has a minimum. So what that means is at the critical point, at the critical point, if it's concave up, then that point must be a minimum. If the second derivative is less than zero, that means it is concave down, then that means we must have a local maximum at that point. Although, if the second derivative at that point is zero, then the test is inconclusive. Okay, generally we will fall back on the first derivative test in the case that does not apply. So let's apply this theorem. To apply the second derivative test, we first need to find the second derivative. So f prime of x is 5x to the fourth minus 15x squared. And the second derivative, then, is 20x cubed minus 30x. Okay, so if we set this equal to 0, now we actually we need to find our critical points from the first derivative, if the first derivative is equal to 0. So that, to find those, we want to factor this. So how about 5x squared, which would leave us with x squared minus 3. So our critical points are x equals 0 and plus or minus the square root of 3. These are the points we are going to test in the second derivative. All right, so f double prime of 0 is equal to 0. So this is inconclusive. It does not tell us what happens at 0. The second derivative at negative square root of 3 is approximately negative 51.96. Okay, so this is less than 0. Because that's less than 0, that means there is a maximum, a local max, at x equals negative square root of 3. All right, the second derivative evaluated at square root of 3 is approximately positive 51.96, so that is greater than 0, 
which means we have a local minimum at x equals the square root of 3. Now, this does not tell us what happens at 0. So let's fall back on our first derivative test. First derivative test. All right, so I have my critical point 0, negative square root of 3, square root of 3. This should confirm what we know about those other two values. So the derivative is 0 at all of these points. Let's go ahead and leave those off for now. If we evaluate at a point greater than square root of 3, then it is positive. It is increasing. A point between 0 and square root of 3 is decreasing. So we have something like this. We have a local minimum at square root of 3, which we said. Between negative square root of 3 and 0, it is increasing. So we have a local maximum at x equals 0. And then past negative square root of 3, it, the function is decreasing, so we have a local minimum. And since that does not agree with the second derivative test, there must be a mistake here. And I think I see it. These two are switched. All right, so this function is increasing and then it is decreasing past that. Okay, so there we have a local maximum that x equals negative square root of 3. And actually there is nothing happening here at 0. Um, so there's not a local maximum or a local minimum. Okay, well that is the end of section 4.5.